Welcome, East Wind, to our Wednesday night segment of eConnect. We are so excited about this new ministry that we're starting on Wednesday nights. As you know, we have been enjoying uh, having a service every night during the week at 7 p.m. through our internet capacity, through uh, social media, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. And we really want to encourage you to be able to connect with your friends. And Wednesday night is a special time whenever you can connect with your friends. And we're going to be having different sorts of programming, speakers and, and preachers, and we're going to be talking about the Word of God. And it's going to be a great informative session. But after it's over, we want to just encourage you to connect with your uh, group through um, either however you want to do it. You can connect by phone. You can connect through uh, Zoom video conferencing. You can connect through a watch party on Facebook. Uh, or if you're one of those brave souls, you may want to invite some uh, friends over to your home. But uh, of course, we're trying to be careful with that, with the social distancing guidelines. But mainly we want you to connect. And if you can connect electronically and you can uh, just share it with some of your friends and uh, we're going to be giving you some discussion questions that you can share and just talk about it because we want to be more than just hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word as well. So we want to try to apply the principles that we're going to be talking about and this week we're focusing on family and friends. And I'm so happy to be joined by two friends of mine that are pastors. And uh, we have been uh, friends for many, many years because more than 35 years ago, we went to Bible school together. We went to Bible school together in St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, we have been dear friends ever since. Our wives are close. And uh, every year we try to travel somewhere together. And you know, guys, we're supposed to be in Chile right now this week, and uh, it got it got canceled. But uh, we spent a lot of time together. Of course, we could spend the whole night just telling you stories, but I don't think you'd be you'd be that interested in it. But we've had a great time together. We have built churches together in the Dominican Republic. We have worked together in Haiti on medical clinics and orphanages, and uh, we are very very blessed. And I want to uh, introduce our guest to you right now. We're going to start with. Uh, Tom Andrews, Pastor Tom Andrews and his wife, Diane, they pastor the Calvary Church in Bloomington, Minnesota, and uh, Brother Tom Andrews was uh, in our wedding when Sister Amy and I were married, and he played the trumpet. Do you remember that, Pastor Tom? Yes, I do. It was awesome. <laughs> we had a great time. Uh, I think that was the last wedding that I ever uh, was willing to do again because you remember I cracked a couple of notes. I do. That's why I'm <laughs> laughing. I do. And I, I remember that. And then I'm trying to remember, did you like play the trumpet as we were leaving or did you play it as as she was coming down the aisle? Where, when was it in the ceremony? You know, I've really been trying to forget. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've been trying to block that out of your mind. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. We sure do love you and Diane and the great job you all are doing. Actually, you're pastoring two churches uh, in the St. Paul, Minneapolis suburbs. And I tell you, you're doing a tremendous job. And we love you guys, and we're so thankful for you. And I also want to introduce you to uh, Pastor Andrew King. He and his wife, Denise, they pastor the Highland Church in Bloomington, Indiana. And uh, Pastor Andrew is one of the most enjoyable and generous people to be around. He's also an avid reader and a student. He's finishing up his doctorate degree, and we're just so glad that you're with us. Uh, welcome, Pastor Andrew. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, we just love you guys. And I just want to start uh, by just sort of trying to uh, unpack this, this scripture that so many people have been talking about in this pandemic. And it's Second Chronicles 714, and I'm sure it's a verse that, that we've all preached about over the years. But really, it seems like it's almost tailor-made for the situation that we're facing right now with this coronavirus pandemic. So let me start with you, uh, Pastor Tom. What, what do you see this verse meaning for us right now in this crisis that we're facing? Yeah, uh, you know, I was just, I was just uh, reading over this uh, recently, and something caught my attention. Uh, of course, I'm very familiar with uh, verse 14, you know, the Lord said, if my people, which are called by my name, you know, and then, and then we'll, we'll talk about that. But what caught my attention this last time was the verse right before that, mm. in verse 13. And, and here, here's what it says in uh, the New King James. It says, when I shut up heaven, now this is God speaking. 
Mm. He says, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land. Now, again, remember, God's saying he's doing this. Or, and this one really got my attention, send pestilence among my people. And then, of course, he goes on, if my people, which are called by my name. And like I said, we'll get to that part. But I think it's important before we get to the real, uh, you know, purpose of verse 14 that we understand, first of all, this whole idea and concept of a, of a God that loves us and that, that he's actually the one in many of these circumstances, I think that we're facing that he's the cause. And I, and I think that creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a dilemma uh, for us. You know, when we, we know how much God loves us, we know how much he cares about us. It's sometimes a little bit hard to really, reconcile um you know what we know about him being so merciful so patient so kind you know with this god that says that he'll he will cause famine he will cause locusts to devour he he would cause a pestilence how could we even wrap our mind around the possibility that god could have unleashed a pandemic upon the world now i'm not saying he did it but but at least there's a possibility, and how do we reconcile that? So I was I was really uh, just praying about that this week and considering that. And here's something I feel like you know God really just spoke to me, and, and sometimes He through through my life and, and experiences, you know, He He will talk to me. So I know uh, Pastor Myers, uh, you and I both are privileged to have uh, teenagers that we're raising right now. <laughs> yes. And, yes. Yes. And, you know, and what's kind of fun about it is, um, you know, we can remember when we were teenagers, you know, and, and we had all of the knowledge. We knew everything. You know, we just felt like, you know, if people would just listen to us, we have the answers. And if our parents would just allow us, you know, we could really, <laughs> exactly. we could really help them, you know. Right. And, and I was thinking what, what's interesting is, is that, you know, now we have the perspective of being parents. Right. And also remembering what it was like to be a teenager. And, and, I, and I was thinking how that, you know, now as parents, um, we have that perspective that, that sometimes we can, we can understand that our, our children, our teens, are heading down a wrong path. You know, they're, 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 they're making choices that to them, you know, they think everything's fine. They think they, they, we're doing great. But, but as a parent, you can see a bigger picture and you can see that, you know, where you're headed, I'm very concerned. And then so, you know, maybe we try to have a conversation and we say, hey, you know, uh, maybe you ought to reconsider that that choice or maybe you ought to think about this. And, and, and you know, we were teenagers and we remember you were very hard. Uh, it's very hard for anybody to tell us anything, especially our parents. And, and, and yet as a parent, you see this 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 challenge that. This is somebody that you love more than, than you love yourself, and you see them heading down this path. And here's what here's what just came to my mind, is that sometimes as a parent, you're forced to almost drastic measures to get the attention of your children, your youth that you really love so much. And I really think if we could understand that God – in the, the amount of love that he has for us is so much bigger than what we know, even as parents, that, that there are times, and, and it's, it's not that God doesn't, isn't kind. It isn't that he doesn't love us. Matter of fact, it's the reason that, that he does love us is the reason that he will sometimes go to drastic measures to allow things. And even as, as crazy as it seems, will bring things into our life so that we will turn around so that we will look back to him. And I think that's where, you know, we start with verse 14 and we realize that God said, now that I've got your attention, now through a, a, a virus, a pestilence, now through a famine or, or some kind of a catastrophe, now that I've got your attention, if my people... Mm -hmm. And so that's that's just one of the things that kind of stuck out to me as we, you know, as we begin to look at the real truths that are there in verse 14. Yeah. 
Of course, we know verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. As Pastor Tom, you were talking about what leads up to that, and you were talking about how this could be the way that the Lord gets our attention as, as the church, as his children. These things are coming about, of course, on everyone, but it may be that God is speaking directly to us through this pandemic. And while you were saying that, I was thinking about how that, you know, the children of Israel were in Egypt and they were experiencing those plagues. And of course, it was in Egypt. But really, those plagues were more about God getting the attention of the children of Israel than they yes. were about trying to convince Pharaoh to let the people go. He Absolutely. didn't need Pharaoh's permission. He could have he could have delivered them right out of, you know, Egypt without any plagues. But I, he knew they were going in the wilderness. He knew they were going to have to know that they could trust this God, that he had yes. all power. And so it could very well be that he was doing that to prove himself to his people. And, you know, uh, Pastor Andrew, what do you think about that? Do you think that that could be where we're at right now, that God is saying, hey, I want to prove myself to my people? I don't know... Maybe that is part of the picture. As I see it, I believe it's a cry of God to us to restore relationship. Mm -hmm. um, one of the texts in, in, that has come to my heart in the midst of this, and I spoke to our church yesterday morning in devotion about, is Paul's writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, he says that God has given us or that Christ came into the world to reconcile the world back to God. Right. And that we are ambassadors, mm -hmm. and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Right. If you'll go back in Israel's history, you will find, and, and, and I think you'll find it, first of all, let me drop this, Deuteronomy 31.20, God has always been concerned about prosperity. He tells Israel, he said, when you go into that land that flows with milk and honey, I'm concerned that you'll forget me. And they did. We all know that. And he went to drastic measures. He literally put his people yeah. in slavery multiple times. This same God who we're talking about. Right. To get their attention to return their love and affection to him. So... The thought that has been in my spirit this whole time is the number one thing God cares about is your relationship with him, right? my relationship with him. That's and right. the text, we know the text is written to the church. It was that church in that day. It was the church of the Old Testament. But if we're going to apply it to today, he's still talking to the church. The world doesn't read the Bible. It's the church that reads the Bible. right? And so when he speaks through his word, he's speaking to us. For the most part, there are some certainly some exceptions to this. Yeah. So... From the beginning, he desired relationship with Adam and Eve. Relationship is everything he cares about. So what I believe we're seeing right now, Pastor Myers, is that we are seeing God talking to his church, that we've allowed a lot of things to creep into the simplicity of a relationship with him. We've made even church quite complex. Right, right. And what he's wanting a return to is the simplicity of a reliance on him, a trust in him. So uh, I do believe he's trying to prove himself. Isn't it shocking that uh, 45 days ago, our world was screaming. We had hit the highest numbers that Wall Street had ever known in right. its history. And God allows a little virus in the world. And here we are tanking like nobody's business. Mm. He is showing the world. I don't care how big you think you are. I can do one thing and shut it all down. Wow. To draw you and wow. your attention back to me. Because what I hunger for, what this is so shocking to think that God hungers for relationship with us. But it's the whole reason he put us in the world. Yeah. Is yeah. he wants to have fellowship with us. So when you that now travel to verse 14, what's 14 about? It's all about restoring relationship. Right. Or as Paul writes in Corinthians, reconciliation. Right. Both of you have been participants in trying to reconcile marriages. Yeah. Parents with children. Uh, warring parties in your own church. 
and maybe even you you both have been in leadership in your districts. You've even probably had to try to bring peace amongst some preachers at times. Um, that whole work is called reconciliation. reconciliation. What are you trying to do? You're trying to restore a relationship that's been broken. Yeah. Somehow we got our priorities mixed up and we got to get back to what really matters. And I believe this is what is going on right now. And I'm not sure. I, I, I'm no prophet nor the son of a prophet. I'm not sure he's speaking so much to the world as he's speaking to his church. Come back to me in simplicity. Tom, you're I believe good. I believe wow. that 100 percent, Andrew. Wow. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. He's, we have we have made and I, please it, you, you guys can edit this. I think we've almost made a show out of church. We've gotten so good and I'm for you guys know I'm for excellence. I'm for let's do this right. Man, I've paid people on staff to do it right. But is he calling us back to just the simple trust? And I'm not saying get rid of all the stuff. I'm not saying that. But to the simplicity of God, you're the center. If this doesn't happen, it's because, or it's not going to happen if you're not in the center of what's going on. Right. We can't put enough lights. We can't put a, be a big enough band. And I can't craft a great enough sermon to make this happen unless God is genuinely in the center of it. So this screams to me. And I'm really leaping now that this is a, a last day announcement from God. Get ready. I'm coming. Wow. I Amen. believe this with everything in me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not a guy who preaches in time. I, I don't, I hardly ever touch it, but I feel in my spirit right now, this is a final cry by God to his church. Let's get it back. Right. I'm coming. Right. You know, you were talking about relationship, and I was thinking about how this has really forced us to really examine whether or not we do have a personal relationship with God. Because all the things that we love in this present world have been stripped away from us. Some people love sports, that's their religion. Some people love Disney World, that's their religion. Everybody's got different things in this world, and all of that has been pulled out. And even, like you said, even if we just lean on the social aspects of a church community even that's yep. been pulled away and now we're forced to be in our homes and find out if we have an individual relationship with god True. pastor tom what do you think no no i totally agree um you know i think i think sometimes you know i've noticed how that god when he wants to speak to us in a spiritual sense he will use circumstances that we we all understand very clearly to bring about you know something natural to bring about a spiritual truth i mean that was what the parables were one thing that occurred to me uh just recently was the thought of this virus you know that that we are we are battling right now and, and i couldn't help but just see some parallels you know of of some of the spiritual battles that we are fighting you know uh, our president uh told us that, you know, we're at war and, and this battle is a silent enemy. Right. And I thought, you know, well, that's nothing new. That's no new understanding for the church. We know there's right. a spiritual battle against a virus that is known as sin. Yes. And, and that virus is spread. And, and that, that, that virus mm -hmm. uh, leads to death. And, and I couldn't help but, but think how that, you know, one of the the symptoms of the coronavirus, and if if somebody out there knows someone that's fighting this or going through it, I'm telling you, it, it, it's a horrible thing. One, one of the one of the the last advanced symptoms is people feel as if um, they're suffocating, and, wow. and they find it very difficult to breathe. And I, I just couldn't help but think about how that, you know, the Bible says of mankind that God formed us mm. from the dust of the earth and we still weren't alive yet. He had us formed, yes. but it wasn't until he breathed into us wow. the breath of life. And, and I thought about all of this, you know, talk about respirators and, yeah. you know, will they have enough? Yeah. And I thought as the church, we know that there is a spiritual aspect, um, that, that there's a spiritual understanding mm. that we can have in this time, that there is a virus that we are fighting. 
and and thankfully you know we know how to combat the sin virus amen yes, and, right. and we, yes. we know that 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 while we were all sinners jesus died for us yes. and paid the price for us he and, and you know and i thought it was interesting that um the the hebrew word the hebrew word for spirit means air in motion or wow. breath or breath. even in some contexts life yes and i thought isn't it wonderful to know that we know the church understands that 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 the cure amen for this sin virus right is to have the spirit of God, not like Adam in a natural sense, God breathed, but at, at, at Pentecost, at the birth date of the church, amen, we know the Bible says they were there praying, they were all gathered together, and then suddenly, amen, there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, yeah. amen, that filled that place, that filled all of them. I mean, isn't it interesting yes. that Jesus even said one time to his disciples, uh, after he had resurrected, the, uh, John records it this way. He said, "Jesus breathed on them, right, yes. <laughs> yeah. and and, uh, and uh, said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit.'" Now we know that that was uh, uh, he was speaking of an event that was very shortly to come, but but I mean that's the answer for the virus, and and I just hope we don't get too focused yeah. uh, on this natural uh, enemy, this natural battle that we're in. And we, we forget, you know, one of the things that, that is interesting, people that have observed, you know, historically the way Americans have responded to wars in the past. You know, for example, uh, when, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, you know, people ran out. Uh, young men, young women went out and, and enlisted. You know, people went to work. Uh, my, my wife's grandma, she went to work in an ammunition factory, you know, right. um, and, and and we think about 9-11, we think about the response. I think one of the things that, that is really uh, hurting a lot of Americans as far as our, our, our morale and all that is, is we don't really know what we can do. I mean, it's a silent enemy. We can't, right. it seems like it's hard to respond. But I'm going to tell you, I feel like with the understanding God has given me about the spiritual battle that we're in, we right. know how to fight that. And you know yes. what? It's not time for the church to just sit back. And, right. and rest and say, well, no church. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to. I'm not going to develop my relationship with God. I'm just going to. I'm just going to be on spiritual vacation. That is not what we need to be doing right now. Right. What we need to be doing right now is we need to rise to action, wow. and, and that means that means fighting the battle with the weapons yeah. that yeah. that we have that are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Wow, that's so rich. That's yeah, so rich. I agree. Wow. You know, Pastor Andrew, I was thinking as uh, Pastor Tom was talking about how that, you know, there's this responsibility that is upon us and how that the breath of God is really what saves us spiritually and naturally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you start out looking at verse 14, it says if that's the very first word. Yeah. So we know that it's it's based on a responsibility on our part. You say, well, why is it our, well, if my people, which are called by my name, that's obviously us, right? We're the that's bearers us. of the name. And, and it says, if so, there's this responsibility. And there's also this possibility that we may not respond correctly. Mm -hmm. But there is the responsibility, not on the scientists, not on the chemists, not on the pharmaceutical companies. The responsibility is on God's people, if my yes. people. So yes. how do we reconcile that with what we're facing in the world today, that this responsibility to really l create an atmosphere that God can hear from heaven and that he would heal our land, that that responsibility rests on us as the church? Is it fair for us to assume that responsibility? Yes, absolutely. I feel like it is. In fact, I do believe we, we talked pre this session about the fact God tried to prove himself. I think, what, I think many in the church have lost faith in God. Not faith in their daily living for God, but faith. we have so many solutions now. We don't yeah. go to God in prayer on issues. I think this is an attempt by God again to say, come to me and I want to prove myself to you how powerful I am. And if my people will do the part I've asked them to do, I'll show you what I can do in this world.
I introduced this thing into the world. I can take it back out if you'll do. What shocks me about God, I'm always astounded by God, is the if word. Right. That he literally gives us a choice. Yeah. He's God. He could say, I'm going to kill you if you don't do this. <laughs> right. Instead, he says, listen, if you'll do this, there's a miracle. What I see on the end of this is his church is going to shine like it's never shown before. I believe that. I believe that's the whole purpose. He's trying to restore relationship so the church is leaner, meaner, greener, and able to fight greater because they know their God. The text says if we'll humble ourselves, well, humility just simply acknowledges we don't have the answers. That, that, that's what humility is. It's just you, you all dealt with proud people and humble people. A humble man just says, hey, I don't have the answers teach me. So humility, if we'll humble ourselves and then pray and seek my face, the word seek my face means discover my will, find out what I want you to do. So seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. When they, when that word wicked gets thrown in there, we automatically mm -hmm. jump outside the church and we look at the world wrong answer. He's talking to the church. That's a so good what point. Wicked, yeah. what's wicked for church people? What's wicked for us? James writes and says, if a man knows to do good and doesn't do it, it is sin. Mm -hmm. I think that would be equated with wickedness. James' letter is written to the church. So I believe God has been speaking to his church for a long time for us to do many things. And we have set it aside. We have thought, ah, it's not that important. God's merciful, he's gracious, and he is all those things. But he's calling us now. It's time for the church to become the church that I put into the world to be the answer for the world. And so he says, if you'll do those things, I'm going to hear you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He's going to hear us. Right. John says he doesn't hear the prayer of the sinner. John yeah. says that. Right. That's but he right. hears the prayer of people, his church, who say, we've got it wrong, God. Come tell us how we ought to be the church in the world. And I really think pastor Myers and pastor Andrews I believe we need to hit our knees and say God how do you want the church to look when we're done with this wow what should the church be when we're done with this we've we've been doing church for years we know how to do church we're humbling ourselves we don't have I would to God right now that people were streaming in our doors because we could look at them and say if you'll walk in here I'll lay hands on you and you'll be healed we can't say that right now. Wow. And we should be able to. Yeah, we should. absolutely. There's a man named John G. Lake who's dead and gone, been dead for many, many years. John G. Lake, pastor to church in Spokane, Washington. You can go back and research what I'm saying. Go to Google and you'll find it. Mm -hmm. John G. Lake almost bankrupted the hospital community in Spokane because of the healing rooms that he instituted in the city of Spokane. They're still in existence there today. It's on the front page of the Spokesman Review, articles from that era where he almost bankrupted the hospital community. Do you know what the biggest industry in Spokane, Washington is today? <laughs> the medical community. And that wow. man almost bankrupted it. As a servant of the Lord, people came from all over the world to be touched by a man who had a connection with God. God's trying to get his church back to believing that we are the answer. We are the reconciliators. We are the tie between them and God. But we've got to humble ourselves and say, you know what? We don't know how to do this. Right. We haven't been doing it. So, Father, come and we will do it however you want us to do. And he said, if you'll do that, I'm going to hear you from heaven. I, I'll forgive you for what you've been doing. And then I'm going to blow this thing up. I'm going to heal your <laughs> land and you're going to be blown away. We're on the, we are on the cusp of revival like we've never known it in our, in our life. That. Absolutely. If we will just humble ourselves and say, Lord, teach us how to do this instead Absolutely. of going through business as usual. I heard a guy early on, like the first or second week of this thing, and I'm sorry I'm talking too long, but <laughs> no, it's rich. I, it's I saw that I saw this guy post on, on, maybe on Facebook or something. I don't know. I was off Facebook. I'm back on now. But I saw him post something. I can't wait till this is over so we can get back to the way things used to be. Shame on me, but I immediately posted. I, I wrote back. I said, I hope not. I hope not. God's not, not trying to get us back to the way things used to be. Right. He's Andrew, trying to say, wake up. Take us change to a new things. level. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, think there, I think there is a feeling in many of God's people Um based on conversations that I've had just like this, that there are a lot of people that are afraid 
of going back in church being the way that it, you know, was. I, people are anticipating something different as a result. I think the worst thing we can do is pray that we go backwards. Yes. You know, we've got to take uh, these experiences and, and what got, you know, you talked about how that church has become, uh, you know, very much a production and uh, I, I just, I just, I, I know we we want to do everything well and with excellence, but is it possible that we've slid off, you know, uh, of the path a little bit, and we've we focused a little too much, you know, on, on the wrong things? And right now, those things have really been taken away, and we're really getting an opportunity, you know, to really get back to 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 the. The most important things, and I and I think you're exactly right, Pastor Andrew. It's it's about a relationship with God, and uh, and and I think that's what we all need. And we're going to see the miraculous. Yeah, uh, our our theme at, at Calvary Church for 2020 is pursuing the miraculous. Yes, and and you know the way that we are going to see the miraculous is by pursuing Jesus Christ in a relationship with Him. And so yeah, I yeah. think I think that's what we're after too. Yeah, you know, I've been feeling. Go ahead, Andrew. I'm sorry. Let me ask you to get a question. Okay. So yesterday, yesterday you both had. Now, Dave, you're you're a pastor, uh, Myers. You're having service where they're driving in, and on and Sunday watching. mornings, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Pastor Andrews and I both are still doing the whole. They stay at home, and we're doing this. I'm not live streaming. I'm recording and and posting. Are you Are you doing live, Tom? Yeah, we're doing the Facebook live. Okay. Let me ask you a question, because yesterday at the conclusion of my time, and we did it together, we timed it where everybody was online together, we took communion together. I have had multiple posts today how they felt the power of God's presence in their homes. Absolutely. In that moment. Absolutely. I will tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm, some of these people haven't felt the power of God in their homes mm. since I don't know when. Wow. And now... This has moved beyond the four walls, which God has been screaming at us for how we've had preachers telling us this for how long. Get outside the walls. Right. Now, now we're forced <laughs> to. Yeah. And, and and the beauty is, is I think all of us wanted to anyway, but the rules were kind of like, hey, what are they going to think of me if I say get outside the walls? Now, right. God has said, watch what I can do. <laughs> you know, no, we, exactly. We have a we have a very sweet lady in our church. And, you know, while you would think people would kind of be complaining about what's going on in this new environment she is thanking god that we are online because for years she's tried to get her husband to come to church and he, for whatever reason he just did not want to want to do that but now she said pastor he has been in every service yeah. and uh and so you know are your people feeling the presence of God in their homes? You know, so so yeah, I'll answer that. I mean, the the, the past week, uh, we we our format was you know after the the ministry of the word, we had worship, and then uh, we would sing a little bit, and then we would go to uh, you know our announcements, and it was very interesting because at the end, as we began to worship God after the word of God, the presence of the Lord fell on us that were doing the live broadcast. And, yes. and we just decided to not go ahead with the announcements and just tell people, if you're feeling what we're feeling right here, if you're feeling that at your home, just shut everything off and pray and seek God, you know, because altars make or couches make good altars and people can right. receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in their, yes. in their home. My wife, when she was a little girl, got the Holy Ghost in her parents' bedroom praying on their bed. You know, I mean, these are the things that are coming out of this that I think are, are really great. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when we talk about really looking at just putting the mirror up to our own heart and our own life, and I think really this time is really challenging the core of the American church, as Pastor Ooh. Andrew was talking about, and really saying, hey, are we really spiritually mature enough uh, to weather this and to not just get through it, but you know, to really excel and to really take this opportunity to reach more people? I think we're reaching more people now than we were a month ago. You know, yes. we're talking, at least for us here locally, we've got some 25 to 30,000 people a week that we're reaching. We can't put that many yes. people in a building. 
That's awesome. And so, you know, people are getting connected that would not normally come into a church building. So it's this great opportunity. But in the midst of that, do you feel like that also there's this sense that, that God's wanting to just sort of let us know that he's God and that he's wanting us? I have for a couple of weeks felt like the Lord is wanting the church to look to him Amen. for the vaccination. Instead of yes. looking to medicine and to man, look for the miraculous. Because this verse says that he will heal the land. Not yes. that there'll be some man's cure that will heal the land. And think about the testimony. If God is the one that brings healing to the land, think about that. The entire world is watching and looking for the solution. And we know who has the solution. Yes. Do you think that this is a unique opportunity now for God to say, if my people will, and this takes us to the next point, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that then I will hear from heaven. Do you think that's where we are now that he's saying, you're my people, the choice is yours, but now here's what you have to do. And if indeed that's the case, why is it, Pastor Andrew, that we struggle so much with the repentance? Is it part of the fact that we're in an affluent culture? Because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm finding where people are, are struggling with repentance. They may, they may feel bad that they got caught, but true contrite spirit that we read about in Psalms 51 that David went through, I don't know. It doesn't seem like we see that that often anymore. Do you feel like part of it's the culture that we're in? I, I don't feel like people feel like they're really sinners. Gotcha. They don't feel the weight of their sin. Uh, and, and I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to send us back to what to, to some things that I grew up with, where it's so heavy handed that right. I, I, I don't believe that's the will of God. But but I think we can reach a point, particularly because this text is to the church, right, where we actually have saints who believe there is no error in their life. And gentlemen, one of the most wonderful saints of God is a man named Paul. And if you'll watch the progression of his own identification as you follow his letters according to the timeline they were written in, not according to how they're in the canon, but how they're written in time, he starts out as, a, as the least of the apostles. He concludes as the chiefest of sinners. That's right. He understood. Listen, you said it earlier. You said, I think easily, you or Tom said that Christ died for sinners. Right. The moment that you and I quit being sinners in identification is the moment we've lost contact with God because he didn't come for anybody but sinners. And the apostle Paul began to understand the fact more and more and more. The only reason I have grace, the only reason there's a repentant heart is because as I live for him and the closer I draw to him, the more I recognize I'm, no, I'm nothing but a sinner. That's and so because I am a sinner, his grace is here to power me. The Holy yes. Ghost is here to give me strength to be an overcomer. But the moment I think I'm not a sinner, I lose grace and I lose God's power to help me overcome. We got a lot of disciplined people in our church, all of us. Yeah. But I'm not sure they're spiritually disciplined. Wow. Yeah. And what God is calling us to is spiritual reliance upon him where we see where we really see, you know, there's an old, old song. You guys may remember this, and I like to sing it to our church every now and then. I'm the old guy in the room, you know. <laughs> I, I like to reach back to that old song. Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Yeah. Show me where you brought me from, where I might have been. We've raised a generation that has no recollection of that, nor uh -huh. connection with that, because they've grown up in the church. So what we need God to do is roll back the curtains and show us what we could have been without him. Mm. Wow. And it will return our hearts to an appreciation, hopefully, for him. I really believe that we have many people who do not think they are sinners. I was at a general conference. This has been 15, 20 years ago. And we came out of a Billy Cole service. Where Billy Cole, we were going to have a Holy Ghost infilling in that service. Right. And he called, every, you guys know his pattern he called everybody to get on their knees and repent prior to the outpouring of the holy ghost so i of course participated with everybody in my row and I, everybody in the crowd 
And after service was over, and the Holy Ghost came, several thousand people got the Holy Ghost that night at General Conference. I came out of there. We were all headed to go get something to eat. And an and older saint of God who I happened to be walking with said, man, I tell you what, when he asked us to kneel and pray, I didn't even know what to pray for as he called us to repentance. Wow. I spun to that person who I knew pretty well, and I said, that's exactly what you needed to repent of right there. Wow. That's so good. Wow. You know, I, I, I totally agree, uh, Andrew, uh, about this. And, and I, think, I think this is the whole point of why humble yourselves is so important to God, because um, he's not going to share his glory with anyone. No, right, and, no. and I think, I, I, I think that it's, it's easy for those of us that have been living for God for a while to forget, you know, where he brought us from. And, and I think that it's, it's that forgetting that, that does allow us to lose that, 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 you know, humility that, that is so important in our relationship with God. I mean, we have to fear the Lord, not be afraid, but we have to, we, our relationship with him has to be, uh, one of great respect and honor awe. and awe. And, you know, I was thinking, too, uh, how that, you know, you're talking about the problem of people not seeing themselves uh, where they are as far as sin. You know, it's the, the scripture that tells us that when in, and even through the New Testament, when when someone was found with leprosy, which I'm sure, you know, Right. We all probably talked about leprosy being that type of sin as well. When you were found with leprosy, um, they were sent to the priest, you know, which is interesting. And and, yes. and so what was what what astounded me one day was the fact that when you read that if you came to the priest and you said, basically the priest looked at you and you were pretty much your most of your skin was healthy, but there was maybe a, a good portion of your skin that was leprosy. The priest would look at you and say, "Unclean." Mm-hmm. Well, I, I I got that part. That wasn't that wasn't that 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 remarkable to me. And then and then it said, and if you go you go to the priest and he says, um, or, or in your condition is that you're mostly all healthy, but you yeah. just have one little speck. The priest will look at you and say, "Unclean." Yeah. And I was like, okay, no, well, that that's a good point. But this is what shocked me. Was that he said when you appear before the priest and you are covered with leprosy from head to toe and there is not one place of health in your body the priest will look at you and say clean and i thought what an amazing picture of how we need to come to god yes and we need to come and instead of saying you know god i'm i'm a good person I, i'm i'm pretty much a good guy i've got a few flaws here and there the lord says unclean yeah but when we come like you said and we recognize how yeah. dependent we are upon him how 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 our hearts are are corrupt our you know everything about us we're sinners from the top of our head to the bottom wow. of our feet amen there's something about that the lord says clean Wow. I can help you. Yeah. I can help you. Yeah. Why do you think that repentance is the path that he lays out that's really the the path for us to have the healing in the land? Why is it that because, personal repentance is directly related to the healing of the land? Because of what repentance is. He, he prefaces that by saying, you need to pray and seek my face. you you got to find the will of God. Obviously, the reason for the plague is because we're not doing his will. Mm-hmm. He's trying to restore relationship. Well, the word repentance just simply we we've made it a lot of things, but repentance in the military is you just turn around and quit doing what you were doing and do something different. That's this is all that he's asking us to do. He's saying you've been doing it your way. Stop. Turn back. Turn yeah. back. Come back to me. No. Seek my face. No. Turn from your wicked ways. The actual wickedness there right. is self-willed ways. Self-willed. Doing what pleases me. We can even worship God to please ourselves and not please God. He says of the Pharisees in the New Testament, he said, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts a million miles away. That's right. They weren't worshiping him. That's right. He didn't count it as worship. Yeah. So the, the work of repentance is for us, every one of us individually, because we are, though, though we are individually in the church, it's the collective body that must repent. 
And so we all have a part in this. We're seeking the Lord. I'm personally seeking the Lord. God, what do you want to be different at Highland Village Church? What do you want different in this preacher? What has got to change here so that we come out of this ready and prepared for what you're going to do in healing the land? Right. You know, we've talked about relationship and we've talked about the responsibility that it's on us as the people of the name. And we've talked about the response but you know, when we really look at repentance and relationship and we look at the response, the Bible says that then he said, I would hear from heaven. Pastor Tom, what do you think the response to this situation is going to be when we know that indeed he has heard from heaven for us individually and collectively? Yeah, and I, I think it, that's a great question. And I, I think that the first thing that's, that, that hits me is the reality that maybe God will say, we haven't come humbly, and so now he will not hear. I mean, that's, that's, that's like, that, that's very hard to even imagine. But, I mean, that's the reality as well, that, that, that he very well may say, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't hear. I don't hear your cry. I don't hear your prayers. So I think, I think that um, if we do humble ourselves, and and I, again, I don't think that that this is to the the world in the sense uh, everybody. I, I really believe um, that he's these things are are designed to awaken his bride. It, yes. it is to purify the bride of Christ. And 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 to like uh, Pastor uh, Andrew said, you know, to these are the last days. Right. And and, and so. I think if we humble ourselves um, and seek his face, I do believe, because we all know this to be a fact, that when we called upon him the first time, you know, when we sought him the first time, he heard us. And yes. while we were in the midst of all of our garbage, you know, he heard us and he yes. responded to us. Yes. We felt it. he received us. And I do believe that if the church... If my people will humble themselves and seek him, I believe we will see a reversal of these circumstances. Amen. And Jesus. For sure, for sure in the spirit realm. Right. But but I believe also in the natural. Right. I agree. And I agree. and I and I, I have no doubt that God is anxious to respond. Yes. I'm right. anxious to move. He's looking he's ready, for, wait, but but he's just waiting, and, and yeah. he's looking, and he's watching. And I mean, this is our, this is our, this is why it's so sad when when in this time so many Christians are falling asleep. Right. What the tragedy is because this is our time to stand up. This is our time right. to yes. respond. This is our time to call upon His name. You know, any of the revivals, the Great Awakening, or any of the historical right. uh, revivals, they they've always always began. Uh, from people that had a righteous heart reaching out to God right. in the midst of all this other thing. And and God responds to that. So uh, I do believe, uh, Pastor Myers, that that this, this is on the church mm -hmm. in a certain sense to respond. And then once we do what God has asked us to do, he will always do his part. Wow. Boy, this has been so rich. You know, I was thinking as you were talking about how we're all having these reports come in about how people are feeling God in their homes and they're feeling God in their cars. And, you know, we had these drive-in services and people said, boy, the power and the presence of God was so strong <laughs> in their vehicle. Yes. I mean, and it's, I think it's, it's God is saying, hey, I can come to you in many different places, in many different ways. And my spirit is already there and it's already drawing. So it's not like he's sitting back with his hands crossed and his arms crossed waiting for us to wake up. He's actually in the midst of this pulling and drawing. And people are driving by the church and saying, hey, I want to be baptized. They've never even been to this church. People wow. are, are, are in Bible studies and they're like, I put it off long enough. I want to get baptized. We're having pastors tell us in the last week or two, they've baptized 12 people in their swimming pool. I mean, yes. it's... It's God working in all of these different ways, and it's just so rich. Well, I, I know we could talk all night <laughs> yep. about this. It's so great. But I just uh, I thank both of you. But I'd like for us to just end in prayer tonight because I just felt a presence of God, and I felt an unction as we were talking. I truly believe 
that what God is drawing us and calling us to do is right in front of us. And I just feel, you know, the Bible says the mouth of two or three witnesses. And I wonder, uh, maybe those of you that are watching at home, if you wouldn't mind just gathering your children or your spouse there next to you, let's just pray together right now. Because indeed, this is an hour. God has called us for such a time as this. Let's just pray together right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the clarity that you have given us, Lord. We know the path. We know what we must do. And God, you are there, not far off, out of reach or out of touch, but you're as close as the mention of your name. And so, Lord, we're asking, forgive us, Lord. Hear our cry, O oh God. Heal our land. But most of all, God, we submit ourselves unto you and we say, Lord, make us more sensitive. Make us more aware of what you're wanting to do in our churches, in our homes, in our families, Lord. Let this be the hour that the church stands up and declares that indeed you are the great and the mighty God. And there's nothing that is beyond your reach and there's nothing that is beyond your grasp. I just pray, Lord, for revival in our churches. I pray for revival in our homes. I pray, God, that right now that men and women all over the world would begin to call out to you in their homes yes. and would begin to say, Lord, we need you like never before. Let there be a covering. Let the Spirit of God come down and let it just infiltrate all of our thinking, all of our paradigms. And I'm asking you, Lord, let it just permeate throughout our spirits, our homes, and our families, that you would be exalted and that, God, everybody all over the world would have to recognize that, indeed, you're the healer and you're the Savior. You indeed are the hope for a lost generation. You're the one that has the cure for the ills of society. And Lord, you're asking us to call upon you and you will release that from yes, heaven. Lord. In the name of Jesus, we claim Jesus Hallelujah. Amen. Well, gentlemen, I don't know how to thank you other than just say I love you, I thank you, I appreciate you. And uh, you have given us such great things to discuss and talk about and these principles and these spiritual insights are something that we can now discuss with our groups. And it's going to, I believe, revolutionize all of us. I pray that God would bless your churches and that you guys would have tremendous revival. And next time when we get together, we'll talk about when we were in Cuba or when we were four-wheeling in Costa Rica. <laughs> I love you. I thank you for your love friendship you. for more than 35 years. So God yes. bless you guys. Thank you, we'll guys. Right, we'll God see bless. you soon. God bless you. Yes. Jesus. Bye bye. Hey everyone, what an amazing e-connect that we just had. And we are so thankful that our panelists and Brother Myers took time to discuss the topic, the response from heaven. And now we are asking that everybody takes time for themselves and applies this word through discussion. Just as we have made it very important and stress the importance of us applying the word through prayer and of course we still want you to do that we are now asking that everyone takes time with your family if you don't have your family with you maybe call a friend call somebody in the church text somebody and let's all apply this word now through discussion in just a few moments there's going to be some questions pop up on the screen and those questions are exactly what we want you to, to discuss about tonight's session this session covered the four R's relationship responsibility, repentance, and response. We are asking that everybody discusses these four R's, and we are looking forward to hearing all of the great reports about our very first eConnect. Lord bless.